The sheer vastness of the Pacific Ocean is staggering, covering nearly one half of the Earth's surface, with only a smattering of small islands rising above. Yet determined people would build the crafts that would sail this enormous sea and establish interconnected communities amongst the scattered landfalls. When Europeans first sighted black people thousands of miles away from Africa, they named the region Melanesia, a Greek-rooted word meaning black islands and separating the black inhabitants from other Pacific Islanders. Today, the term Melanesia is embraced throughout the region and discarding colorism or racism for defining Pacific regions such as Melanesia, Polynesia, and Micronesia, the Pacific Islanders have formed much stronger cultural bonds that leave these artificial boundaries in their wake. Uh, as you can see, there's a uh, we've got the the canoe, eh? the Fijian double hand canoe. Mm -hmm. This is just a, 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 a smaller size, eh? but uh, in reality, we have built uh, massive massive canoes with, which could hold uh, two to three hundred people uh -huh. uh, at a point in time. Eh? So, um, uh, given the given the the canoe in itself, it could carry them in long distances. Um, uh, even these evidences of inter-island uh, traveling eh, mm -hmm. from uh, within the Pacific region, mm -hmm. um, their mode of transport it, it was quite uh, advanced during that time. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, well, uh, if from an outsider, if they came and see how the the, the, the canoe sailed. They'll be fascinated mm -hmm. of how how skillful our forefathers were. Skillful indeed. No compass, sextant, or maps. Known as the wayfinders, they navigated thousands of miles of ocean using their senses, sighting stars which weren't always visible, the winds, flight of the birds, tasting the water for river freshness, smell of the sea, driftwood seaweed, and one you might not want to try, testicle navigation, either sitting on the floor of the canoe and feeling vibrations, or tying a coconut hair to a small stone with the other end tied around the scrotum, and slipping into the sea at the bow of the canoe, feeling the swells, waves, currents for directions. And with all those skills, they hit the island destination of a thousand miles right on point. The canoes and the oars were strongly constructed with tropical hardwoods like teak, ebony, and sandalwood. This one is one of the last and donated to this museum. That's an oar, one. The sail is up one-tenth the size of the original. Yes. It looks so large. It is a. Uh, it, it's large, but imagine back in the days, uh, the vessels were really huge, and uh, it was used for trade purposes, for sea, uh, for during war, war times. Uh, they had ramming uh, canoes, which could ram into other canoes. Uh, and yes, everything was done on the canoe. Cooking, uh, they could carry uh, livestock on uh, canoes. Uh, mm. They had to go from island to island to replenish their supplies. So they managed to go through uh, thousands and thousands of miles of travel through those uh, means.
traditionally uh, in Fiji, uh, the Fijians would wear the uh, their hair afro. Mm -hmm. uh, they would use the uh, the traditional Fijian uh, comb. Mm -hmm. Still, uh, the women uh, still maintain that uh, hairstyle uh, to date, and some Fijian men are using it. Uh, with the stories that uh, our ancestors came from Africa, and hence the reason why. Um, most Fijian women had uh, the Afro hair. Itoke. Itoke. Yes. And they were explaining that they have an oral history that goes all the way back to, to Tanganyika. Tanganyika in uh, East Africa. East Africa, yes. Is that right? Uh, that's the, the oral, uh, oral tradition, eh? Mm -hmm. um, yes, it, that story has been uh, passed down mm -hmm. uh, from generation to generation, eh? Our Lutuna Soma, our one of our forefathers, mm -hmm. and Dengue, who came right from Africa. Mm -hmm. As you can see, we, we have a fizzy hair. Mm -hmm. From the ancestral past to the present, Fiji hair, what we call nappy, and the Dura canoe are symbols so embedded in Fijian culture that between 1924 and 1970, they graced the coat of arms and waved on the national flag. When Europeans first observed Africans on Pacific islands thousands of miles away from Africa, the initial response was, must be survivors of wrecked slave ships. Wrong. Thousands of years before slave ships existed, archaeological and biological, that would be DNA evidence, confirms that earlier waves of humans out of Africa reached New Guinea over 50,000 years ago and by sailing catamarans they reached the Melanesian islands 3,500 years ago. And as Melanesians will inform you, that's 2,300 years before Europeans learned to sail the open seas, 1,100 years before Jesus Christ, thousands of years before ancient Greece and Rome, and many thousands of years before France and England even existed.
19th century colonialists and missionaries conflated the history of cannibalism and Melanesia by labeling native customs, including tattooing, as debased and primitive, while promoting a narrative that Melanesia was a paradise wasted on savages. However, the same colonialists are silent on the ongoing kidnapping and enslaving of millions of Africans while supporting the extermination of Aboriginal peoples in both America and Australia. So, who are the savages? The term was blackbirding. Starting in 1863, tens of thousands of Melanesians were tricked, kidnapped, and or physically forced onto ships, transported thousands of miles to sugar, coca, or cotton plantations in Queensland, Australia, and sold to the owners. This supposedly labor contract was slavery by another name, and the British would end this savage practice in 1906. Black people with naturally occurring blonde hair and light eyes? When Europeans first came across this phenomenon, they insisted that it was a result of diet deficiency or contact with shipwrecked European sailors. Not shipwrecks. The genes encoded hereditary instructions were present during the African chrysalis of humans and of course present when the Melanesians trekked out of Africa over 5,000 years ago. That coding includes tall, dark, fat, skinny, light, dark, and black complexion with light eyes and blonde hair. Oh, oh, oh. 
The other two Melanesian countries are Papua New Guinea and New Caledonia. Caledonia is still French territory. They fly the indigenous Kanak people's flag and the tricolors. The African diaspora, the ones whose ancestors were kidnapped some 400 years ago and survived months at sea chained to the putrid bottom of a slave ship? No, these Africans left the continent 5,000 years ago on a journey that would eventually cover 10,000 miles and would take 1,500 years of walking, oaring, and sailing of love and pain, strife and challenge before reaching islands of the South Pacific and building a new home nowadays referred to as Melanesia. And yet after millenniums, Melanesians still remember African home they left behind. Melanesians, a proud, warm, gracious, and elegant people. I'm just glad to be related. This is Griot Historian Jamal Okeo Jamal. Oh, I want to go, 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 go